if you want to be invited into 7,000 local homes each week, this morning's guest will knock on the door for you. Who is he? You'll meet him coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at Graves, Pools, and Spas on Highway 544 in Socastee between the Intercoastal Waterway and South Carolina 31. We're focused on our show sponsor, the Myrtle Beach Herald, and we're visiting with its advertising director, Bob Nyman. Good morning, Bob. Hi, Greg. Thank you for coming in early on a Wednesday morning. Hey. A lot going on, a lot going on There's with uh, our show on. sponsor. We've got that. And, oh, I like your jacket. That is fancy. I think That's our, pro our producer got you that. Uh, Sherry got you and mm -hmm. B.Y. Patel. And uh, I think Jack Thompson got one. Of course, Paul Gable and Tom O'Dare, our editor, Steve Porter. So with a group of seven uh, now having those fancy jackets, I like. These are all name hitters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Has that uh, gotten some conversations going on the elevator or... In the places around town? Whenever I ride the elevators, people look. <laughs> people look. We had a guest uh, on a couple of days ago, Jim Beaudry, who was with us on Monday to kick off the week, and he was highlighting he's from a casket company, Batesville. And on riding an elevator, when uh, someone else on the elevator saw a casket, they thought, oh my God, no, not casket. So you never know what happens on an elevator. <laughs> yeah. He uh, claimed it was gasket company gasket. and uh, got him to calm down a little bit. Oh, okay. but, uh, Thanks for coming in. Bob, real quick about yourself. Are you originally from the area? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm actually a transplant from Florida. Florida. But it's okay that I'm here because my wife is in close proximity, uh, being from East Tennessee. She's, your wife's from East Tennessee, from is Johnson that right? Johnson City, Tennessee. Wow. And, yeah. and did you meet her in Tennessee or in Florida? In Florida. You met in Florida. In Florida. What got her down there? Uh, <clears throat> she was actually working for Eastern Airlines. Oh, good, yeah. And I met her uh, through uh, traveling on Eastern Airlines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You used to travel a lot? Uh, very, very, very frequent, very frequent. Uh, weeks at a time, sometimes a month at a time. Oh, come on. Before you got married? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, that could probably put And up. when I got married. Is that right? Yes, sir. Even after you got married, you were still spending time on planes a lot? A lot, a lot. Huh. And now I drive everywhere. Yeah, 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 it's a lot about driving now. When was the last time you were on a plane? Probably about five years ago. Is that right? Yeah, I'm, I yeah. don't think I spend much time on planes anymore. No, it's too much of a hassle uh, today. It's not what it used to be yesterday. Right. And if I should go on a flight, I will probably enjoy being on one. But the congestion of getting on board with uh, everything that one has to do these days and right. getting there early. So if it's within a few hundred miles, I'll drive. Right. You mean pre-9-11 and post-9-11. Oh, yes. That has really impacted. And for your wife, I think you said that Karen was with an airline. So for folks who are either pilots or stewards or otherwise in the airline industry, for them it's probably changed dramatically as well. I'm sure it has. And to what degree, I'm not really uh, certain. But I do know that change is good. And change is something that we have to uh, become accustomed to. You've been in the print industry for quite a while, Bob. You're familiar with change in the newspaper business. When did you first actually join? What was the first newspaper you worked with? Okay, this goes way back. I've been in this business for, uh, I hate to tell you, uh, uh, 40 years. Oh, my God, yeah, when you were yeah, a child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was, yeah. I, I was just 12 years A baby. Years old. <laughs> actually, I can go back even further because when I was 12, as you mentioned, I sold uh, uh, the Miami Daily News on a street corner. I is have, that I right? have my own corner. You had your own corner own for corner. the. It was so the Miami. Is it the Herald now? Was uh, the, Miami? the Miami Herald was part of the. Was separated from the Miami Herald, and the Miami Herald, I believe, purchased the Miami News. The Miami because, Daily News. Yes, yeah. they went away. One was a morning. One was an afternoon. Right. Right. And but then I graduated, and I. Well, I think when I was 14, I had a newspaper route. Is that right? Not That's just right. on a street corner. I have my own neighborhood. Wow. Yeah. So I kind of had ink in my blood yeah. for a long time. And uh, what I do best, though, is marketing and advertising. I've always specialized in uh, tourism and economic development. And uh, I enjoy that, either on the client side or on the print side. Right. And 
I've been doing it for a lot of years with a lot of different cities, a lot sure. of different papers, a lot of different publications. Had you ever been in any communities similar to Myrtle Beach, obviously similar to this tourist base? Well, that's what, that's what brought me here, Greg. Uh, you know, sometimes we say, what was the best thing you ever did as a career? Or where was the best place you ever lived? Right. Uh, it's all about being happy in an environment. And I have to say, uh, I guess about four years, uh, we lived in the Florida Keys. You and your family lived right. in the Florida Keys? Right. Uh -huh. And the Florida Keys is strictly tourism. It's, uh, there's economic development, but very limited because there's no available land. You have to knock something down in order to grow. Right. But the Florida Keys was uh, uh, very interesting. Uh, in fact, when Webster wrote his dictionary, he left out a marvelous word to describe the Florida Keys. It's kind of relaxed. It's relaxed in a fast pace. Uh, people are different because you're dealing with a tourist like all the time. All tourists. All the time. All the, all the time. time. Yeah. And but there's uh, still some slow seasons like here in the Myrtle Beach area, right? Or no? It's never really slow because really? the only difference is the price. The weather is always the same. Right. And uh, it's like summer and winter. One season it's a high priced uh, commodity one season it's lower priced so you get a transition of different people traveling to the keys at different times mm -hmm. but i really enjoyed it because it was marvelous it was uh really great uh it wasn't totally uh, uh a fast pace right but it was sophisticated in a very relaxed way right and previously uh coming here I, i've been at many other places sure a few places during the years and this became an opportunity, and it took me a little while to think about it. And when I was thinking about relocating here, I said, where was the best place or the best time or the best picture of what I really want to do from what I have done? Right, sure. And I look at Myrtle Beach as a tourism mecca of the Carolinas. Sure. I mean, this is a terrific place. Oh, all, yeah. the, all the growth, uh, all the development, it, it's it's where I want to be, and I understand uh, this type of a market. Mm -hmm. Very definitely. You know, and obviously, you, as you think about different markets up and down uh, the East Coast or otherwise, most of your time has remained on the East Coast, though. So you've seen a lot, both of Florida as well as uh, the Carolinas. And also uh, Tennessee and Kentucky. I okay. used to uh, be a consultant uh, maybe four years ago for a bunch of years. And I traveled to uh, small community type newspapers. Much like the Myrtle Beach Herald. Yes. Sure. Except they had situations, they were either getting ready to sell their publication or they wanted to have a higher margin and they couldn't afford a uh, proper advertising team. So sure. I would come in and consult and stay there for a few months. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. A few months, enough time obviously to make a real impact. Enough time to be away from home for 30 days at a time. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> We mentioned, obviously, your bride from East Tennessee. You all also have... Uh, two we have two daughters. Uh, Chelsea is 22 and Stacy is 24. Right. Uh, Chelsea is at the University of North Florida. Great. And Stacy is in Florida Atlantic University in Boca Raton, Florida. Is that right? Yeah. University of North Florida is in Jacksonville. In Jacksonville? Jacksonville, Florida. Is that right? That's fascinating. Just uh, on Monday, interestingly, we had a guest, uh, that same guy I talked to you about, who had three daughters yesterday, a guy with two daughters, and now you here, two daughters. I'll be interested to see how the rest of the week shapes up as it relates to... Uh, It'll you know. be interesting. In fact, I'm still looking for the guy that didn't write the book I wanted to read on raising daughters. <laughs> I'm sure you would have enjoyed one of those at Absolutely. some point. Yeah, yeah, you and Karen have a great feel there. You know, when you think about ingredients for growth and you think about either papers you've been in in the past, whether your time there in the Keys or in Miami or even in Columbia, when you think about big papers and small papers, what do you think is the main ingredients for growth, let's say even for us here at the Myrtle Beach Herald? Okay, I, I, I have to say there's one main ingredient, and that ingredient is the people that work at the paper. Uh -huh. You know, our industry today is not as good as it was years ago. Much like the airline industry. Absolutely. You know, things happen. We were talking about change earlier. And what I like about this specific area and this specific paper being the Myrtle Beach Herald are the people that work there. You know, we have a very high morale. We have a lot of integrity. 
uh, we have terrific writers. As a matter of fact, our paper, as a reminder to the viewers, right. produces more news in one weekly issue than all of the other newspapers in this area right. in any one week. Mm -hmm. Plus, in one day, we produce more news, total news, right. total locally, right. than any other paper in the state. In the state of, in South, the state Carolina? of South Carolina. Wow. Yes, sir. And probably in more, you know, in more. Uh, well, I'd, obviously, I'd, I'd been told at one point, news, 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 whatever it is, local content is obviously the vehicle to make it happen. As you know, our goal at one time was to have 30 locally written stories, columns, and profiles. We, of course, recently broke that 40 number and consistently hover around the high 30s to the low 40s. So I know, obviously, that should make it a lot easier when folks are looking for local news, they're looking for local columns, they're looking for profiles of people that they know. They want to see that, and assumably that's a good thing for advertisers as well. We sure see it in local news, whether it's here on Fox or on WPD or BTW or whatever station. Local news is the gravy train for them. Well, you know, what happens, uh, I mean, in the real world, whether a new visitor is in our area as a tourist or a new resident recently relocated or a local that's been here for many, many years, they have a lot of choices. Right. And if they want to watch the national news, they turn on national news networks like CNN or the 6 o'clock news right. or 7 o'clock news. Uh, if they want to know what's happening in the community because they live there mm -hmm. or they're vacationing here, they need a local newspaper. Mm -hmm. Now, what separates our local newspaper, it's Number one, we're very reader friendly. You know, here, we, you know, over here, we have a, a copy of today's paper, right? Of last week's of paper. Last week's yes, paper. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, it's reader friendly. You know, you, you know, sure. the way it's designed, the way the look, the appeal, is terrific. Sure. It's easy to read, and in our paper, unlike a big metro, like when's the last time you read a, a very big metropolitan type paper? Mm -hmm. It probably had 60 or 70 pages. Right. Did right. you read every page? No. No, that's right. Well, because you didn't have the time. Time. Or the interest. Right. And they have a lot of ads that confuse the reader with the content. Mm -hmm. Now, not in every case. Sure, sure. But in our paper, we have a proper ratio of advertising to ads so that every ad gets looked at. Advertising on every page. the content, yeah, yeah. And then we have the content, the news content, and we have great local writers. You know, as publisher, our publisher did a great thing, a great thing about four years ago when he purchased our paper. Mm -hmm. You know, he spent a lot of time and energy in building up a proper editorial team. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference. It took years to do that. Mm -hmm. And once he had the product, the next step was to focus on, hey, maybe we should be able to pay for this publication. Right. And so then we go into the venue of a proper advertising team. Mm -hmm. And that's where we are now. We have a proper advertising team. We're growing. Right. As, as a matter of fact, we weren't quite happy with our circulation outside of the readers that subscribe sure. and outside of racks. Oh, yeah. So we uh, recently uh, developed our circulation department and hired a circulation manager. Who's got a tremendous background. I had with, no idea the extent with of his. ship companies. Absolutely. Absolutely. He was with the Des Moines Register for years and as the circulation manager there in Duluth, Minnesota. He's been in major markets like Des Moines as well as relatively small markets. Correct. Right. But what he has done for us is to leverage our newspapers, which are currently being sold in grocery stores, drug stores, uh, convenience stores. Right. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're doing sampling. And we're taking neighborhoods that we have l little circulation. I mean, we're not everywhere. You know, right. dominantly, we're 51% of our circulation is in Myrtle Beach. Myrtle Beach proper, right. Proper. right. But we're both north and south. Sure. West. Sure. 
Sure. Uh, and even east a little bit. Right here in Sacasti, a very Correct. large presence. Correct. As you see on the masthead, Garden City, Merle's Inlet, Myrtle Beach, Sacasti, and Surfside Beach. We specialize in these areas. Right. And we provide the local news for all these areas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now we're creating an additional circulation of readership by going where we haven't gone before. Right. And so we are growing in that. I have been fascinated to see the number of folks that have turned to it in a positive, in a positive sense and said, yes, we want it there. A lot of folks say, you know, I haven't seen the Herald before, or I've only seen it, I've just never bought it. And that's important as it relates to knowing that it's available and that folks can gravitate towards it. I'm glad you shared that. Alan was uh, uh, recently uh, in a convenience store. Right. And as he was waiting to, uh, to see the manager, uh, he had copies of the paper with him. Right. And a uh, customer of the convenience store walked up and said, oh, what's that? The Herald, I've seen it. And Alan said, well, have you ever read it? He said, no. There are people that do not read our paper. Right. Right. And what we're trying to do currently is to reach out and promote our publication oh, to yeah. these people. Oh, yeah, yeah. very definitely. Well, obviously, this show has been sponsored by the Herald for a year now. It's our vehicle using what I oftentimes consider, having been in this broadcast industry for more than a decade, as a real powerful vehicle. As we saw this weekend, the number of folks that tuned into the Super Bowl for that, the number of people nationwide, as well as here in the market area. There's a lot of folks broadcast television, sight, sound, and motion, but it doesn't take anything away from the thrill of a newspaper being able to hold it and touch it and feel and rip it out and mail it to friends and family, as well as using the website, MyrtleBeachHerald.com, going to the website and being able to link stories off to folks. But obviously the thrill here, the Herald's been sponsoring this show, a great community vehicle show, as you know, as we said just yesterday, a professor from Coastal Carolina University, tomorrow an author of a book, A Profit Building, on Friday, obviously the head of the Ori Georgetown Technical College Foundation, and on Monday a gentleman who sells caskets in the funeral home industry. As you know, last week we had tremendous guest Gwen Swenson, so the Herald is reaching out to help underwrite and sponsor a show that's surely dealing with issues that are important to the community. Actually. A reader can qualify this by reading just one issue at a time. Mm -hmm. We probably break more new news oh, yeah. Yeah. than any other publication at any time. Look at this story, the headline story in, uh, in, in Thursdays, and I say last week. It's really not. As you highlight in a weekly, it's a lot of news that is in there, and folks can take the time. That's the great thing about profiles, whether it's the veteran of the week, the public safety profile, the teammates of the week, the public servant of the week. There's no other paper, not only in this area, but in the state, in the Carolinas, that has more profiles of pertinent and important uh, uh, people here in the area. But when you look at this story, the non-English-speaking school population soaring at the beginning of last school year, 1,000 non-English speakers, the beginning of this year, 2,000. Now the impact that has on Horry County education and having to have bilingual teachers as well as bilingual assistants really puts a financial pressure on, not that it's discouraged, but it just highlights the financial pressures that the Horry County school districts and education have to go through to make sure that their educators, their teachers can communicate with their students. It's a big deal. Where have you seen this story? Nowhere else except in the Herald. But you see, you hit it because we are a true local community paper. And what is a composite? What makes up a community paper? It's very simple. It tells everything happening in one day with a week's worth of news. Right, right, right. And we have photos of the local people. Right. We have events. We, we, uh, we cover sports. You know, anything that will interest anyone in this community, it's a must read. Right, right. Because if you're ignorant of what's happening in your own backyard, we okay. have a problem. And you, and you know, the, the newspaper industry today is having situations like any other industry. Mm -hmm. But community, a true community newspaper is what a community is all about. Mm -hmm. And we are like the quiet giant mm, that, has like been, that. that has been waking up for quiet about four giant. years. Yeah. And now we're ready like the lion to roar. Right. Because we have the greatest publication, I think we do. Mm -hmm. And we have an audience. And I really like that there are a few people that know nothing about us. And we are taking steps to tell them our story. 
more than a year now as the largest paid weekly newspaper, community newspaper in the area, markedly larger. And obviously, there are other publications that launch. Uh, we've seen some free publications recently uh, take off in the community, both on a weekly basis. What are your thoughts about free publication? Well, Again, not to downgrade anyone. Obviously, having worked in the daily newspaper business forever, you're still a fan of daily news. Uh, I and, work in free publications. Right. And I understand them. Uh, our publication is invited into the household. It's requested. And that's the difference. Because when you have a quality product invited into your home, mm -hmm. it's as good as direct mail, except right. it's too much direct mail. Mm -hmm. And it becomes confusing. But when our uh, folks are having their morning coffee or their evening tea or whatever it is, right they can read the Herald. They can spend the time. They're much like the North Myrtle Beach Times or the Ori Independent or the Coastal Observer. They're invited into the home. That's exactly right. The Herald in that same We're all way. invited into the home, but it's what's the content of the paper? Mm -hmm. I mean, is it something I'm going to enjoy? Is it uh, mostly community or is it mostly national, international? Right. Right. Is it statewide? Is it global? Good for, yeah. is, is there a lot of negative things happening? Right. We're like a friendly newspaper. We love to report good news. We love it. Mm -hmm. But there has to be good news for us to report. Right. Right. And if there's something that the consumer or the reader has to know about, mm -hmm. it might be negative, we will report the facts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's this knowledge that separates us. Right. It's the reporting and the way we do report. Sure, sure. You highlighted at some point, Bob, I believe, advertising being the necessary vehicle to help support, whether it's this TV station, Fox TV, WBTW, WPD, or, of course, newspapers, whether it's the Sun News, uh, the Ori Independent, or, of course, the Myrtle Beach Herald. Advertising has to be a vehicle. You know, when my daughter asks that question, what is advertising? You know, that's an important thing. Why do we have that? Well, let me say one thing. I like all publications. Right. All these publications are terrific. Of course, I'm prejudiced with ours. But our advertising department, we have sales representatives, and they're really not a representative. They are a media consultant. Mm -hmm. Because when you take a business, we love to consult to that business. We like to identify what is your business, tell us about it, what have you done, what haven't you done, what have you tried, what's worked, what hasn't worked. And they need a proper mixture of direct mail, print, uh, electronic, whether it's radio right. or cable. Sure. They need a little bit of everything, the coupon books, everything. Mm -hmm. We just want our fair share. We have a small circulation. We do. I mean, we, we print and distribute 7,000 newspapers every week. Right, right. But of those 7,000, we have virtually no waste because right. every publication is read and our demographic profile because we're so concentrated and focused and targeted mm -hmm. it's a high percentage of readership that are qualified to make a purchase right. with all the products and services that are available those are great words Bob we just got a couple of minutes what about the future of the Herald what do you see over the next of course you've been here since uh, September over the next uh, 12 months over the next five years. What do okay. you project? Uh, I project that we will become larger but never too big. Okay? And that we will become a twice daily mm. or twice, twice weekly, weekly, excuse wow. me. Wow. Yeah, twice that's weekly. a big deal, Bob. Yeah. Because twice weekly, we can do so much mm -hmm. for the community and put something back into the community. And there is one thing that we're putting back into the business community. Do you know that we have not increased our advertising rates in two years? Mm. And we made a decision in 2008 because of the economics and the trends. Mm -hmm. We're putting something back with these businesses. That's tremendous. Absolutely. So between advertiser friendly and reader friendly, we're doing our best. And we're always available to consult. We will create ad campaigns. We will do strategic uh, consulting uh, with no obligation. If a viewer wants to learn more about the Myrtle Beach Herald, what's the best phone number to call? Is it the 626-3131? Is That's that the it. best number? That's it. And the website? And the website. 
MyRtleBeachHerald.com. MyRtleBeachHerald.com. Okay, great. In fact, if you look at MyRtleBeachHerald.com, talking about the community, we have a little button you press, you click on, it's called Job Seekers. Right. If anyone out there is looking for a job, all you got to do is fill out the form, send it into us, and at no charge, we will publish it in the Herald, wow. and it's on the And internet. on the website on at the no, website. Charge no charge. Folks who are looking for a job. That's tremendous. Well, obviously, the website's getting a ton of traffic, more than a million uh, hits there in, in just a, a very short amount of time. And we clearly, have a lot of page views, a lot of viewers, a lot right. of hits. Uh, Markedly year-to-year -year growth. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry we've run out of time, Bob. Thanks so much for being here this Thank morning. You. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Stay tuned to more Carolina People's Bob Nyman, the advertising director of the Merle B. Terrell, our show sponsor, coming up next. I sat here trying to think of a good way to wrap. I always think of my favorite shampoo, Prell. This is a little different. It's a letter off. It's Prowl. People, readers, advertisers, and local, local, local. That's what it's all about. It's local news. You heard Bob talk about it. The Myrtle Beach Herald's doing it every day. Go online, MyrtleBeachHerald.com, or pick up the phone, 843-626-3131. That's Prowl. People, readers, advertisers, and local, 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 local news.